Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. I hope you have enjoyed listening to the last few episodes on personal success and that you were inspired by something said in one or more of the interviews. I will continue to do special segments like that periodically, so please stay connected to the podcast. Today, I want to talk about legacy. As you know, Queen Elizabeth II, a worldwide well-known figure, recently passed away. Right after the announcement of her death, the news reports, the social media posts, and conversation in general was centered around legacy, her legacy, and what all of that means. What she did, what she accomplished during her reign, which I believe was a 70-year reign, what she did with the 96 years she was given on this earth, whose lives she had touched, what she impacted, policies, countries, people, all of which comprises her legacy. Because once your last breath leaves your body, all you have left of you on earth is your legacy, what you left behind, material and otherwise, including the lives you touched, the words you spoke, the things you did, the areas that you impacted, the service you gave. So what does legacy mean? And is it something that only applies to, you know, famous people or or rich people? Um, First, the definition of legacy. It it really has two parts, the the tangible and the intangible. You know, the tangible part of your legacy is the material possessions you leave behind, you know, such as money or personal property or or other assets, such as your business. Uh, The intangible part is anything that isn't material, you know, like your character, your faith, your ethics, your core values, your reputation, your acts of service, the lives you have touched, uh, lessons you've taught, words you've spoken, memories people have of you, and, and so on. You know, legacy in a nutshell shell is your life story. It is whatever remains on earth once you're gone, whatever has been passed on or has been passed down, you know, such as as we talked about before, your faith, your service, your value system, your character, your money, your assets, and so on. Um, As you can tell by the definition, anybody can leave a legacy on earth, not just the rich and famous. In fact, you are creating or building your legacy right now and every day with the choices you make and the life you are living. We are all interconnected and every action has a reaction and what you say and what you do affects someone else. So every word you speak, every action you take, every decision you make is in fact creating your legacy on earth. Queen Elizabeth is quoted as saying, I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings and to put my trust in God. The long view I believe she was talking about has to do with determining what type of legacy you want to create and leave behind and then living your life accordingly. Um, The thing is, you can also leave suffering and pain behind when you leave Earth. It it really is up to you to determine what you want your legacy to be and then to start the work of creating the type of legacy you want in your day-to-day decisions and interactions and actions. You know, imagine your funeral service for a moment. I know people don't like to think about that, but what will your legacy be? What will people say about the life you lived and how you lived it? Did you make a difference in a positive or impactful way? Or did you collect things and only make material and financial gains? Is the world better because you were here? Will your presence be missed or will people, you know, forget or want to forget that you ever lived? Would your family or those closest to you say you treated them and other people well? What would your coworkers, neighbors or friends say? Would people have a hard time finding something nice to say when your name is mentioned? You know, that expression, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Will there be silence when your name comes up because people don't have anything nice to say? 
Did you live your life doing you, as the saying goes? Uh, there's no issue with doing you or with self-care. The problem is when you only do you and when you don't think or live outside yourself or realize that your life is, is bigger than you, it's bigger than your world, it's bigger than your block or your neighborhood or your culture or your race and so on. Uh, instead of me, myself and I, it really should be we, us and them. Don't live your life like you're the only person on the planet. Selfishness doesn't make for a good legacy. Now, we know you don't live your life, obviously, so that people can say nice things about you at your funeral, but you should live your life with that consciousness and with that understanding that I am creating a legacy while I am living because the sum total of my life when I'm gone will be what I did while I lived, how people felt when I came around, the things I said to people, the things I did for or to people, the people I served, how I served them, how it benefited them. Those are all of the components of legacy. Uh, there's a quote by Maya, Dr. Maya Angelou, and it is, people will forget what you said and what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. How do people, how do you make people feel? When you enter a room, what kind of energy do you bring with you? Do people feel drained after interacting or speaking with you, or do they feel better afterwards? There's an expression, you will never see a U-Haul following a hearse. You can't take stuff with you. You can't take your house, your shoes, your bank account, your car, your investment portfolio, your clothes. None of that's going with you. Uh, even accomplishments that you have achieved during your life that you know may have garnered attention and accolades and fame can't go with you. It is always nice, of course, to have you know a hospital wing or a building or a street you know, in your name, but you also need people to know why your name is being used, who you were and why you were being honored uh, in that way, a balanced picture of legacy, you know, tangible and intangible. Because any lasting legacy is mostly coming from those intangibles, not the tangibles. Most of the stuff you acquire will be very quickly consumed, dispersed, sold, and in some cases discarded. Unless, you know, for instance, you, you've taught your children how to responsibly use and invest the money or, or that you left for them or operate the business that you, you know, passed down to them. Uh, the lasting part of your legacy will be what you said to people, what you did for people, the time you spent with people, what you did with the time you spent, um, you know, whose lives you impacted, touched or changed. I'm thinking of the image of, of Oprah Winfrey, uh, you know, during the last taping of her, her show, there was a special that was televised and unbeknownst to her, they brought out all of these young men who were benefactors of her generosity, whose education she had paid for by donating scholarship money to Morehouse College in Atlanta. And it was just visually stunning and, and, and almost overwhelming to see the sheer number of people whose lives were touched by her giving. In that moment, she was able to experience what many may not see in, in, in an entire lifetime. And that is the direct impact of her legacy, the vastness of her legacy while she was still living. I thought that was such a great picture and, a, and such a great example of legacy, of, of, of lasting legacy. Because of her heart and her generosity, lives were changed. Those men, you know, getting an education changed their economic status and it opened up doors of opportunity. And then they were able to go and change other people's lives because lasting legacy tends to have a ripple effect and it tends to be multi-generational. We see that in wealthy families where, you know, priority is placed on land and business Businesses and, and money being passed down from generation to generation. You can even pass down intangible things such as your faith or a value system generationally. Because legacy should have the following characteristics. It should be intentional. It should be multifaceted. It should have that tangible and intangible. It should be lasting, have that ripple effect that I talked about before. It should be impactful and it should be multi-generational because the Bible says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. There's a quote by Queen Elizabeth that says the true measure of all of our actions is how long the good in them lasts. My question for you and myself today is what will your legacy look like? What will it sound like coming out of the mouths and reflected in the lives of the people you touched? Because every convo, every decision, every action, every inaction, you know, you're creating legacy. Queen Elizabeth is also quoted as saying it's worth remembering that it is often the small steps, not the giant leaps, that bring about the most lasting change. 
The good news is, as long as you're still breathing, as long as you're still here, you have been given a chance to change the trajectory of your life. If you don't like how it's going, you can change that. There's a quote by Scott Fitzgerald, and it is, for what it is worth, it is never too late to be whoever you want to be. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you're, you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start over. Life is not a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot and nobody gets out of this thing called life alive. So you have to make every day count. There's a quote, the things you do for yourself are gone when you're gone, but the things you do for others is your legacy. Denzel Washington has said, don't aspire to make a living, aspire to make a difference. One of my favorite quotes by Martin Luther King is, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And my last quote, the idea is not to live forever, but to create something that will. That something that will live forever is your legacy. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.